let's go! So Max Johnson is for sure the QB1. We've been doing a ton of film studies. We'll link them all down below. And today we're actually going to show you one of Max's big weaknesses from last season. So let me ask you a question. Okay, so comment down below. Who do you think had the better season last year in only their start? So, and I'm actually going to show you my, um, excuse me, Max Johnson stats first. And as you could tell, just based right here, you see Max Johnson, six touchdowns, one interception in his starts. Uh, not so great completion percentage, uh, but obviously he was a true freshman thrusted into a really difficult position. And of course, his quarterback rating was good, but his QBR wasn't so great. Now, uh, this is going to be the biggest difference between Max and Miles is obviously Max gives you something in the running game. And on top of that, Max is, of course, a really good QB sneaker, something we've been talking about in our film studies. But what I want you to see is QBR. So on a play-by-play -play efficiency basis, and QBR does a better job of that than actual quarterback rating. So Max's quarterback rating, if you actually included him in the SEC's best, he would have been about middle of the pack. But in terms of QBR, Max Johnson wasn't even a top 60 quarterback in all of college football. And once again, these are just his two games that he played. Um, so yes, Max was really solid, but overall he wasn't spectacular. And the same thing can also be said of Miles Brennan, who obviously had his ups and his downs. He missed a ton of throws in this Mississippi State game. But overall, you see Miles Brennan, his quarterback rating in the final two games that he played was significantly better, as was his QBR. And look, of course, Vanderbilt was awful, but Max Johnson also got to play uh, Ole Miss, who had arguably the worst passing defense in the SEC. So you see here, uh, this is, you know, pretty common that, of course, the pocket quarterback doesn't have great rushing statistics. But this is Miles Brennan's passing chart. And as you see here, <laughs> Miles did do a really good job of spreading the football around the field. These X's are interceptions. This was an interception to Racy McMath against Mississippi State. That should not have been an interception. If he had decent pass protection, this would have, in fact, been a touchdown. It was not Miles Brennan's fault on that throw. And uh, this was the interception at the end of the game on a Hail Mary. So if you factor in that little extra bit of context, Miles Brennan was really good at pushing the football down the field. In particular, this part of the field, the deep middle, which... I think next season, defenses are going to run more too high coverages, which means the deep middle of the field is going to have to be something that needs to be attacked. And Miles Brennan did a really good job of that last season. Let's take a look at Max Johnson really quickly. And this is Max Johnson's passing chart. Once again, just the games against LSU, uh, excuse me, against Florida and Ole Miss, and as you can see, the big gaping hole is right here. Max Johnson didn't even attempt the football on a 20-plus yard basis to the deep middle. Now, of course, in the intermediate middle, he was 7 of 7, and he threw some absolute darts. The only problem was the majority of these over-the-middle throws were to Keishon Butte, and in most of those cases, he was wide open against Florida and Ole Miss. But overall, you see on the intermediate, uh, Max was really scattered as far as throwing the football outside the hashes. We'll take a deeper look uh, at that. And when he was throwing to his right, you see a lot of X's over here. Once again, my super fancy uh, graphic here. Um, this is a red line div uh, dividing the two, and this is obviously Max Johnson's chart, and this is Miles Brennan's chart. And if you did a comparison, you see that the, you know, the scatter plot is far more diverse up here compared to that 
down here. I want to show you this throw against Mississippi State that Miles Brennan made, and I want to show you also a very similar throw uh, that Max Johnson made to a very similar coverage. So uh, Mississippi State drops back into too high. Okay, so this safety scoots back here. This safety scoots back here. We got a little bit of a play action fake, which helps bites this right up the, the middle here. But our pass protection, thanks to Eric Gilbert, was broken pretty quickly. And you notice Max, I said Max, Miles sees that this is too high coverage and where the ball needs to go is right in the middle. So it did. It was just one read, and boom, and he's getting crushed. He sat in the pocket, and if Eric Gilbert had decent protection, this ball would have been thrown a little bit more here, but we still get a good deep pass in the middle of the field, and, of course, we would score a touchdown later on this drive. Attacking the deep middle, it's very important, okay? Now, uh, you, you go to SEC StatCat, you see that, LSU's most successful passing play last year was all verticals, which was the case here. Now, in this case, LSU decided to run a seven-man protection and a three-man round on all verticals. Um, but all verticals is basically what you saw here. Everybody is just running deep routes. No intermediaries, no nothing. This is the LSU offense in a nutshell, okay? All verts. And we took advantage of it because Miles still had the arm to throw this football while being hit down the field. So here we are, third and eight. Uh, we, we did a, uh, a film study. They were one and four at third down. They got better uh, through, through the course of the game. We've done so many film studies on Max Johnson. You guys might be sick of him, but you guys keep telling me that you want more. So we essentially do the same thing here in all verticals. Um, see, no intermediary routes. I'm not a big fan of that on third and eight. They run a, a little loop, a delayed blitz here at their linebacker, and they're able to pick up a sack. But was there a throw to be made on this play? And Max Johnson actually did a good job making that guy miss and running there was the right move. But I do want to show you uh, this from the behind view, the end zone camera, okay? So here we are. Uh, it's a little tight. We don't quite have all 22, but you'll see how things open up in just a second. Um, so right here, in uh, you, you get this guy coming off the edge. And as, you know, Tom Blacklitch is pointing out, they're looping this linebacker over here. And we're running six-man protection. I also want to show you how a struggling guard can affect your protection. So you notice here, Jason Hines, who had been struggling this game in all season, Liam Shanahan doesn't really pay attention to this A-gapper. See how quickly he turns his head once, once he sees that this guy's not coming? He thinks he's going to drop back into coverage. And he looks to see if Jason Hines needs help. This is just too much surge right here. Hines does a good job passing this off to Deculus. But, you know, once again, Liam Shanahan decides to come help here. This guy comes over the top and obviously sacks Max Johnson a little bit later in the game. And we did a breakdown of this. Liam Shanahan actually fought underneath this right here and picked this guy up. And Max Johnson missed an open... Cole Taylor for a first down, but still, the protection here is obviously not great. We did not do a good job picking up these blitzers. However, like Miles Brennan, the protection did break down, but Miles Brennan stuck in the pocket and quickly realized that Florida was running what Mississippi State was running here, a variation of too high. So when you run too high, guess what? Max Johnson is seeing that they're in too high. Once you run too high like that, guess what's going to be open? Middle of the field. So, Max Johnson decided to bail on this, but if he would have sat in the pocket, all he would have needed to do was just chunk it towards this referee. And once again, he didn't have time. All right, this is an extremely difficult throw to make. Quarterback coaches out there, please correct me on this. 
do you think Max Johnson should have sat in here and potentially threw this ball to Jure in the middle of the field? Or you had a slot receiver man-to-man against a linebacker here. Once you see too high, once again, we're running four-man verticals here. Just float this ball over the top, okay? This is what we want. Slot receiver. Once again, Coy is more of an intermediary slot wide receiver, not known for stretching the field. But here, he runs a good round. He's got a step on him. If we just sit in this pocket, don't bail, guess what? We're chunking this ball for a big gain. This is a tough throw, okay? But this goes to show you that Max Johnson did not throw a deep pass to the deep middle of the field at all last season. So that's the next step as a quarterback, stretching the football with your arm. Now, he did do a good thing here. Once he saw that this guy was the only guy he had to beat, he was smart in trying to make this guy miss, but this is what happens, okay? Not to pick on this offensive line anymore, but you can't give up on plays, okay? Chase and Hines gave up. He was like, okay, he's sacked. But if we would have just stuck with our block, if we all, all we need to do is just shield this guy. One of these two guys, shield him. Okay, don't just watch your guy go down. If we if we do that, Max Johnson's running for a first down. But either way, you know, once we pick this up, once we throughout this offseason pick up this, the next step for Max Johnson as a thrower is throwing the football in the deep middle. Okay? Let's say we do pick this up and Max has a clean pocket. Is he able to throw to the deep middle of the field? That's going to be the big question for Max Johnson going into next season. Boom! So, Max Johnson, Miles Brennan. So, Miles, of course, isn't in the discussion anymore because he is injured. But I wanted to show you where something uh, Miles Brennan, you know, was successful at is something Max Johnson needs to get better at, which is, of course, attacking the deep middle and just overall his explosive pass plays. And you look at some other advanced stats, such as pro football focus grade, catchable pass percentage, QBR, and and all of that. Max Johnson wasn't all that great. But then again, he was a true freshman, and he did not have the supporting cast that Miles Brennan had. Uh, you know, we've done a few, few blah, blah, blah. we've done a few film studies on Cole, St- Cole Taylor's blocking. Um, how much he struggled in this aspect against Florida and Ole Miss. Ironically, his shoe got caught in the turf on this play. You'll see it gets folded right here. And this goes to show you that Max's supporting cast, you know, his protection wasn't all that great. That trip forced him to miss his block. And notice when he's throwing this ball to Jure, he is deciding to throw this football when he's not even open. He gets crushed. He anticipated this throw, though and delivered an absolute strike, and Jure did Jure things with the football afterwards, and that goes to show you what he had to deal with. Uh, Max really didn't have a whole lot going in his favor in this game, uh, you know, of course, outside the shoot throw and a few other things. Um, he was pretty good. That's why, you know, you have to look even past those stats uh, to see what Max Johnson had to fight through. Yes, it's not the prettiest. Yes, it's not the absolute sexiest because he doesn't have this absolute cannon of an arm. Yes, he got very lucky as far as interceptable passes are concerned. Uh, He got a lot of lucky deflections that normally turn out to be interceptions. All that being said, I I still lean and I still believe in Max Johnson going into next season. But there's obviously a lot of room for improvement and we still do have another red zone max johnson film study that we're going to show you we've already done one of those for the auburn uh mississippi state and auburn mississippi state we've already done one for uh his mop-up duty games against alabama auburn and um what was the other mop-up game he did texas a&m if you want to watch that that is floating in your face right now and, you know, all our Max Johnson film studies are linked down below. It is Power Hour LSU 
Boom! I think we're doing burgers tonight. Let's 